Hey guys, let's talk. So Wizard of the Coast makes $300 million a year for Magic the Gathering. $300 million. If you had asked me before I made this video how much they made, I would probably be like, oh, they're probably barely making $100 million. But no, it's $300 million. And the Pro Tour prize pool is still $250,000. There seems to be a discrepancy between those two numbers. Now you might say, oh, the Pro Tour is not useful, it's not promoting the game the right way, and we'll get to those arguments because Wizards of the Coast has made compelling arguments in the past. Greg Leeds, who was the previous president of Wizards of the Coast uh, before he was replaced by Chris Cox, so I did do my homework on a lot of the topics for this week. He tried to get rid of the Pro Tour Totally, but R&D fought him and they won. This new guy, Chris Cox, is probably not going to lose this fight. So $300 million in gross revenue a year, uh, or annual revenue a year. That's insane. Uh, I would not have imagined that amount of money. So Pro Tours, very little pay for Pro Tours. Uh, Magic developers are extremely bad. They made Magic Online. Honestly, again, another topic for this current week will be what is Magical Next Digital? And will that replace Magic Online? I'm hearing that it could replace it and its core functionality and its game. It's not Magic Duels, it's Magic Next Digital. It's a totally different digital platform um, offering players a simplified way to do it, a modernized way to do it. At least that's the concept. And we'll talk about what that could mean for Paper Magic as well as Magic Online. Going to Magic Online, I mean, if you were a developer and you worked at Wizards of the Coast for 20 years and your project was Magic Online, I would honestly not hire you. I would say, wow, this is like a very poor, I mean, it, it just never got better. It still looks like it came from 1997 or like, you know, it looks exactly the same when I first installed it in the CD. I think it was like a six edition CD that comes with it and you put the CD into your little Dell and then the Dell downloads it. it. It looks exactly the same. I don't know why money or resources or especially $300 million, right, to improve the game. Okay, let's say a hundred of that's overhead, which is suspect. I, I highly doubt it cost that much money to print cards and develop them and you know, we all know that the developers at Magic are not being paid what your know, high level developers at Facebook or Amazon are being paid. So Magic Online, a complete crisis of, um, that's why we have Magic Next Digital. And when I first read about it and done, did my homework on it, I was like, wow, this makes a lot more sense. Uh, because Magic, uh, they, in the Hasbro investors meeting, they announced Magic Digital, or they announced Magic would be a top five eSport. Not that it would be, but it currently is. So that's what they told the investors. And if you tell the investors something, you better back up what you say, because that is all recorded, that's all documented, and if Magic does not become a top five eSport, there's gonna be some investors who, go, who will say, hey, I invested in this company because I, I put more money in the company, or I didn't sell my stocks because you told me this, and that was false. So we'll see. And lastly, $300 million does not mean Magic should get more money from us. Uh, standard rotation is just, I am seeing the impacts of it now because you can see cards spike a lot faster, cards don't drop as much. You know, rotation is crazy now because 95 or nine, 95 to 99% cons of Tarkir is a different story, but Fate Reforged is pretty much what's gonna happen to Shadows of Innistrad, it's gonna happen to Over Gatewatch, et etc. Cetera, et cetera. 99% of those cards in Fate and Forge, outside of the Dragon Planeswalker and maybe like Monastery Mentor, I've already plummeted to Oblivion and they will never rise again because they have no playability in any of the Eternal formats. And that's the way it goes. That is the way it goes. So when you have more rotation, you have more of a loss of value to the end customer, which would be us. And that's something that happens. Do they really need to do that to make even more money? So last year they made $300 million with this new rotation schedule. If it does what it's supposed to do, it'll make another 50% of whatever. So let's say that's like another 100, and 100 to $150 million. 
Do you really need to punish your players that way? Especially with Eternal Masters, Conspiracy 2, Command of 2016. These are products players want, and these are products players will buy, but they're not, but that may be not the goal of Magic is to make it affordable. These are not going to, Eternal Masters is not going to make Legacy more affordable. I can tell you that much right now because every single Legacy staple like on the reserve list has already spiked. And hey, you do need those Legacy staples to play Legacy. Anyway, bye guys. I'll leave a comment below if you, uh, we're gonna have a really good discussion throughout the week and leave a comment below with a question or what is your opinion about $300 million? How would you spend it if you were Hasbro? Anyway, bye guys.